Hey guys, so to um, finish up my shortwave listening uh, environment here, um, I got a uh, an antenna rotator uh, for the uh, one meter tuned loop. Um, now, the first thing, I, one of the things I noticed, this is the second uh, thing that I bought. Um, that has absolutely no reference on it anywhere as to where the thing was made or where it comes from so I guess we can assume where it was made and uh, where it comes from uh, and I get the feeling that uh, where it was the country where it was made I'm probably feeling a little bit of a, a backlash <laughs> as to the feedback about things that are happen to be made in that particular part of the world. <laughs> it says US listed here, which yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um so obviously the uh, first thing I did was I took it at the box and wired it all up just to see that it works okay. And well it works okay, but um it just made the most horrendous noise uh the mast unit. Well, the actual control unit makes a lot of noise as well. Um, but my problem is that where I'm going to be mounting this is uh, right outside my window, which is close to my next door neighbor's door. And so the risk is I don't really want to be upsetting them unnecessarily, shall we say. So I just assumed that all I needed to do was take this thing apart. Um, and just, you know, grease up the gear train. Um, however, as you can probably see, it's all pretty well greased up. Um, and uh, so I, I couldn't see exactly where the, uh, the noise, if you like, is coming from. Because apart from this gear right here and the one on the motor shaft, everything else is turning relatively slowly. Um, so I took the motor off the... Uh, mounting plate here uh, and the first thing I noticed is uh, <coughs> the two plates either side which hold in the bearings for the rotor were actually loose uh, so I tightened them up and made sure everything was aligned and not jamming up um, then I took the motor off the plate <coughs> I'm sorry having taken the motor off I then ran it uh, just on its own and it runs totally silent so as you'd expect the motor motor is not the problem um, so, um, near as I can figure, and there's really not too much more I can do at this point, is it's really this gear right here that's the cause of all the noise. Um, and I've, you know, tried greasing it up. There's uh, like an adjustment plate here where you can set uh, how they mesh with this gear and the drive from the motor. And I've tried varying the amount of uh, backlash doesn't seem to make any difference so I don't think there's anything else I can do here at this point I've set it so that there's just noticeable backlash you may not be able to hear it but anyway the other problem I think is okay out of the box like that out of the housing it's it's sort of okay you can live with it uh, when you put it in the housing it's way worse because this housing as you can see is shaped like a bell so, if I can rig up some way to uh, bang it against something. Guess what? It resonates. It resonates less now because I've painted the inside of it with uh, liquid tape. <laughs> Just to see if that helped. It's helped a little bit but not a whole lot. So, of course, when I put this noise maker inside this, it just makes it worse. However, it is what it is, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back together and if it still isn't really any any better then probably what I'll do is put some sort of a uh, a wooden or metal piece across here and screw it in from each side to stop it from uh, vibrating see if that makes a difference uh, Yeah, there you go, nothing simple. I thought this was going to be uh, take an hour to do it and uh, there you go Right, um, so I'm going to put it back together and see what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, something tells me I'll be rigging up my own with a stepper motor and an Arduino one of these days, but we'll uh, we'll go ahead with this one for now anyway. So I brought the antenna in, and uh, according to the weatherman, today was the last sunny day. We're into very heavy rain and like much colder weather for the next couple of days, so I thought I'd get it off the mast and indoors, and uh, I just have to modify the bottom here so I can fit the rotator to it and go from there. So dry fit number one it's uh, very Heath Robinson <laughs> but it's on there and it's not going anywhere um, I think I might just junk these uh, pipe if you like brackets and just put flat metal brackets there because uh, there just isn't a lot of bearing surface and so not sure how uh, durable that is. So then the next challenge, uh, it's pretty easy to just mount the base pipe. This is just a bit of bent pipe that was left over in the kit when it was delivered. Um, but I will be able to hold that in there fairly easily. But I also then need to mount some sort of a stay that will stop the hoop from flopping around in the wind. I have to think about that. Well, back in the operating theater with this uh, <laughs> with this uh, rotator, uh, been having a few problems with it. So um, when I got it mounted on the uh, on the wooden base um, and went to just test it again, I found it wasn't working. And basically the, the gear train was jammed up. Um, I couldn't see any reason why it was jammed up. Anyway, um, what I discovered is that the way I'm pretty sure this thing works, as you can probably see, is you have this control here that you can move manually. And then you have an indicator around the back which follows it. Um, and then the motor cuts out when they're aligned again. And so with this box it says the instructions are on how you align this with this is you move this all the way around the full 360 wait for this guy to catch up you go back again to full 360 and again wait for it to catch up and then you're uh, aligned um, what tends to happen here with this one not every time but most of the time is when you go all the way around um, there is actually a stop underneath this gear here a, a metal rod actually welded to the gear there's two stop pins on this gear here's one the other one is underneath and when you're in one home position let's say the zero degrees one of these pins is just touching or just close to uh, the stop that's welded to this gear when you tell this guy to go around 360, everything goes around 360, and then this guy catches it uh, when it gets to the 360 degree position. What's actually happening here is this guy gets to its limit before this guy stops driving. So this guy gets to the limit. I suspect the way this thing should work is when, this get, when it gets to the limit, the motor stalls, it quickly detects a, a current jump and then switches off or something like that. But what's actually happening is this, it just leaves the drive to this motor and it jams the whole thing up. And so I have to literally unscrew these guys, let that gear off so the motor can <laughs> free up, put it back together and then we're good again. <coughs> so what I've managed to achieve is that it will leave the zero degree position and go back to it no problem so long as I don't go all the way around to 360 so if I go around to about 300 and then back again we're good uh, now actually that's going to work fine for me because I actually only need 90 degree movement it's not like I'm pointing a TV antenna to pick up stations coming in different directions so my loop will either point sort of north south or east west or something in between and that's all I need so we're good but at least I think I know what's wrong with it uh, and yeah so we'll carry on um, <laughs> accepting that limitation and uh, see where we go so this is what I've come up with for the uh, the vertical support 
to hold uh, the antenna from uh, flopping around in the uh, in the weather. Um, it's obviously much smaller than the original 2x4 that was holding it together. Um, but I think the 2x4 was over the top anyway, and this is a piece of hardwood, so hopefully it'll be uh, reasonably durable. And uh, it seems light enough that it's not going to put too much of a load on this uh, gearbox thingy. So here we go guys, the uh, last dry fit before it goes outside. Um, all the wood is thoroughly oiled. So hopefully it has a reasonable amount of uh, weatherproofing. And I just need to tie it off up at the top. Now we'll be good to go. Um, and I regularly check out that it will continue to work. You seem to be okay. Although I don't like the noise it makes, obviously. So I think I'll stop it here and I'll call this part one. And part two will be I'll fit it on the, on the mast outside and then we'll do some listening tests to see uh, does making it directional make a difference. More to come.